Hey coders, welcome to part 2 of Laravel with Livewire series. In our previous video, we created Laravel F, understood request response lifecycle, discussed four main concepts of Laravel framework, that is router, model, view, and controller. We then started implementing e-commerce website with its admin dashboard. We have created two pages for the admin side, and today we are going to apply some styling to that. For styling, we will be using SCSS, which requires its own processor, which is not available in the Laravel framework by default. That means we will be installing the package dependency using Composer, and we will also be needing to make some changes in the build tool, which is Vite in Laravel 9. Before Laravel 9, the build tool of choice in the Laravel was Mix, but since Laravel 9, they have changed it to Vite. Now, in order to work with Vite build tool, and integrate it with SAS P processor, we will have to do some minor changes in our build configuration files as well. So let's start with that. Let's go to the documentation website first and let's search for read. Now, even though Vite is the default build tool for Laravel framework, and many of the configuration needed to integrate it with the Laravel application have already been done by the Laravel itself. But still, we have to do some more changes to actually make it work. For that, the first requirement is that we need to have Node installed on our system. In particular, version 16 or above. To verify this, we can use these two commands. If they return the Node version and NPM version, that means we have Node and NPM installed on our system which in my case already is and and if you don't have node install you can go to the node website and install the latest version from there and once you install node npm by default gets installed as well then we have to do some configuration settings so the thing is this when we create our laravel app in its first installation we actually don't have the laravel plugin for the week installed however in the package.json file where we put all the dependencies on which our Laravel application depends. So these are third-party dependencies. And what Laravel people have done is that, by default, they have put the two plugins required for Vite to work with the Laravel already there. So even though they are not installed, but their dependency is mentioned there in the packet.json file. All we have to do is that we have to run this command, npm install. Let me first take you to packet.json file and verify that we have these two plugins there. So package.json is in the root folder, or root directory. There it is. Now if you notice there are dependencies over here. So we have certain dependencies mentioned over here. They, they are just mentioned, they are not yet installed. So once we run npm install, it's going to go through all of these dependencies one by one and installs them. So let's run this npm install. And once those dependencies get installed, we will get another file made available over here, which is going to be package-log.json. So let's run this command, npm install. Now, as you notice, this package-log.json got appended in the root directory. This means now over here in the package-log, all the dependencies which are actually installed are made available over here. So if you go to package.json, these were the two dependencies that we needed for that configuration, the Vite build tools configuration with the Laravel application. We needed those two. Now these dependencies have been installed. Now let's go back and see what we need to do further. Now the next step is to make our JavaScript and CSS or SCSS in our case available over here. So whatever CSS file or SCSS file or JavaScript file you create, you have to mention that name over here. Now this part is optional for the development part. That means for the development part, if we don't put the entries of our JavaScript and CSS or SCSS file over here, the Vite will still work. But when we convert this project into uh, production mode, and if those file names are not mentioned over here, then they will not be made available in the production version of the application. So for the production version, you make sure that you have all these files over here. Since we are building our project and it's in the development phase, so there is a chance that, that during the course of this tutorial, I might forget to insert the names of the CSS files or the JavaScript files that I create that we put over here. But you must put them over here if you intend to convert this project into build version as well. Now that point is clear. So if we are using CSS, then we won't be needing to do any more changes except for putting the file names that we create over here. 
in the read.config.js file. But since we are using SCSS, that means we need its preprocessor installed as well. So this is an extra dependency that we need to install. And for that, let's go to read documentation where these steps are mentioned, how to install that dependency. So let's go to features and let's look for our preprocessors. Printhouse is a preprocessor. There it is, the preprocessor. Now we will be using the extension SCSS, but you can use this ex extension as well. Both are SAS preprocessors extension. So to install this preprocessor, we need to run this command npm add hyphen d sas. npm add hyphen d sas. Now if you notice this sas dependency got added to our dev dependencies object in the package.json file as well. So that means now the Laravel framework knows that this is another dependency on which our application depends. And since we have installed it, so I'm sure an entry has been made in the package.log file as well. Okay, now we are all set and ready to work with our SAS files or styling our admin side dashboard. So let me close these. Let's close category.blade. We will be needing, we will be applying the styling on the layout.blade.p3, so keep it there. Let's close welcome as well. Now since the styling is one of the assets, that means we have to go to our resources folder which contains our assets, the CSS asset and JavaScript asset. But since we are going to work with SAS, so we are going to create another folder in the resources folder, SCSS. Now in the SCSS, let's create another folder which is going to contain all the admin related files, the styling files. So let's create another folder inside SCSS named admin. And there, let's create a file named, since we are starting off with the layout.play.php, so let's give it a name, layout.scss. Now, before we put any styling over here, let's link this layout.scss file with our layout.play.php file. So let's go up and to associate this layout style file with the layout blade file, we have to use another directive, the blade directive, which is called read. Now this takes an array as a parameter and within this array you can provide as many dependencies over here as you like. Since currently we only have one dependency which is layout.scss. So let's provide the path of this file starting from the resources folder. Resources. Within resources we have SAS folder scss and over there we have another folder named admin and there we have layout.scss. This one doesn't require any semicolon to terminate. In fact, none of the blade directives require semicolons. Now we need to make the entry for this file in the read config file as well. So let's go there. Since our read config file is also in the root folder, there it is. So we simply have to copy paste it. So let's copy in the and over here we can remove these two files because we are not using app.css or app.js files so I'm replacing them with the, the layout.scss file so that's the entry that we made had we not performed this state at least during the development phase we would not have encountered any issues okay now let's go and work on our layout.scss file now in the layout.scss let's define some basic properties which are going to be applied to all of the elements in our HTML page and mostly they are removing the default margins and paddings associated with any HTML element so that we know for certain that if any margins or paddings are applied they have been applied by us. So margin 0, padding 0 and box sizing border box. Now in order to verify that our style file has been properly linked up with the blade file we are going to give random background color to body. Let's give it this antique white for the time being. Now before we go to the browser and verify that has this color been applied to the web page, we have to start the read development server. What read development server will do, it will continuously monitor any style changes that you made 
and it will automatically update the pages. If you remember in our previous video, whenever we made any changes in our files, we had to manually go and refresh the browser. Because the development server, the PHP Artisan server that is provided with the Laravel itself, it doesn't have hot replacement module. That means any changes that you make to the code will not take effect unless you refresh your browser. But when it comes to styling the UV, the moment you make any changes in the CSS styling or SCSS styling, those changes will be automatically made available in the browser without making us refresh the browser. That's because the V development server contains hot replacement module as well, which means it on the runtime updates the changes and make it reflect in the web page as well. So we have to start that V development server first. For that, as you can see, there are two terminals open. In the first one, our artisan server is running. And in the second one, I am going to start the read server. So to start the read server, the command is npm run save. Let me expand the window so that you can see. Now this read development server has started on a separate port, which is 5.173. Now, since the read has started on a separate server, now let's go to our browser and see if the background color has been changed to this antique white. Okay, now as you can see, the background color has been changed from white to antique white. That means we have successfully installed all the package dependencies needed for Laravel and the SAS preprocessor. Then we have successfully linked our layout.sas file with the layout.lake file and we have started the V12 and server as well. Now we have done all the configurations and installations needed for the styling. Now we are ready to define further styling for the admin side. Now to get a rough idea of our targeted styles, let's go and have a look at the demo project. So in the port 8000, our demo project is running and this kind of style we have to apply to our Lara shop one. In our first video, when we are creating the HTML, if you remember, we have divided this page into three parts. The first, this horizontal one, which contains this Lara shop dashboard, admin and, and the login and logout option. They are in a section called horizontal nav. Then the second section contains this vertical navigation and the class name given to that section is vertical nav. And the third section contains the contents and the class name given to that section is content as well. So let's go and let's start working with the horizontal nav first. Let's come in this out for the time being. Okay, that reminds me we haven't yet brought in the Google Fonts link as well. So first let's go and get the link for the Poppins Google Font. So this is pop in Google font and these are all its styles. So the minus sign wherever you see those, that means I have already selected those styles, which you can see in the list over here in the pop in. So these are all the styles, pop in styles that I have selected. Now I have to get the import link. So copy everything between style tag and let's put it over here. Now in the HTML tag, sorry, not tag, uh, HTML block, let's copy this thing and paste it over here. So this changes the font. As you can see, the font has been changed and the color has been removed as well, and we didn't need to refresh the page. Okay, so let's close this Poppins window and and let's go back. Let's add the after Cito element as well because we will be using after Cito element for our shopping cart item. So we want these default settings to be applied to the after Cito element as well. And let's bring this block down. Okay. Now let's define some variables which are going to contain the theme color we will which we will be using throughout the admin dashboard and if we have those colors defined in the variable then we don't have to remember or type in the RGB values every time we need to use one of those colors. We will just mention the variable name. So let's create primary color. I'm going to use different color than the one in the demo. Let's put color randomly then hover over it. It will take us to this palette. Let's go over here and select one of these. Let's use this color as a primary color. Okay, now for the second 
blue color. Let's copy it, paste it. Now hover over it and choose the lighter version of same color. Okay. Now let's use a color for the button. Let's make it shorter. So every button. So every HTML element that we are going to style as button is going to contain this color. So let's put it. Rather, let's put the same color. Okay, I forgot to put same color over here. Now let's go there and choose a darker version of in the same shade. That's better. Okay, so we are done with the variables and since they are more specific than the HTML, so let's bring them up. Okay, so so far all these defined at the top are generic. They don't belong to anything specific. Now let's work on the body. Let's change the background color to secondary color. Let's make it bit lighter than this color. Let's go there and okay. Let's make it even lighter. That's better. Now let's work with the left navigation. So the class name is navigation left. Sorry, not left. Horizontal navigation. Let's confirm. Yeah, it's horizontal left. First of all, let's give it background color. We need primary color for it. Okay, now we have to bring this login and admin towards the right side. So for that, we are going to set the display property to flex, justify content space between, and align items inside. Okay, now let's put some padding around the edges. Top and bottom, let's put zero because our contents are already in the center. For the left and right, let's put one ring. Let's make it two. Okay, that's better. Now we need to bring this logout icon next to the large user's name. Now since each of these elements are in separate paragraph, and since paragraph are block elements, so first of all, we have to change the display property for both of these elements from block to inline block. And to do this all at once, that means change the display property for both of them at the same time. We are going to use another block within this horizontal nav because we are targeting one of its children of horizontal nav, which was the right right nav, this one, which contains the log admin name and the icon. So right nav, let's put express. That means all the children of right nav. Let's set its display property to inline block. Now they are on the same line. We need some space between these two elements. So either we can apply the left and right padding to one of these, or we can give this one the right nav a fixed width and then set its display property to flex with the space between. So right nav again. And since we are defining this one more time, so we can move this block inside the right nav. That means let's move it inside and. Let's remove this. So this one applies to children inside the right nav. Now for the right nav itself, let's give it width. Let's give it width of um, five percent of viewport width. And to verify how much width that is, let's temporarily give it a border. Call it one pixel. Black. Okay, we need more space. Let's make it. 10% of view width, little bit more, maybe 15 will do. Okay. Now we have to move this towards the right, at the uh, right edge of this box. So for that, copy these three lines of code and paste it over here. 
now you can see there is space between them we can remove the border now let's remove the border now the thing is this if you notice this display property justify contain and align items we are repeating this twice and who knows throughout this tutorial how many times do we have to repeat this property so that means we can kind of separate these three lines of code into a separate block and we will keep on calling that separate block wherever we need it it's like a function in a programming language but that same concept is called mix in in the sas world and since we might need it in other css files as well so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to define it into a separate file so let's create another file inside the sas admin folder let's give it a class name let's give the name base style dot scss and let's cut this and put it over here with a directory called mixin let's make it flex space between paste it over here now we have to extend this base hyphen style file in our layout.scss so let's import since both are in the same folder so let's try base hyphen style and since it's a css file scss so we don't need to provide the dot scss extension and we don't need to provide the underscore as well the preprocessor will take care of it this underscore is a kind of hint that this file is actually a partial file which is being included in other files okay now let's go back and let's remove these three lines of code and in its place include the mixin which is flex space between then over here for the right nav again include the mixin flex and still working so that means everything is working fine we have successfully extended our base hyphen style file in our layout.css file a css file and we have successfully defined a mixing and used it at two different places in the layout.css file okay now if you notice the moment we move this right nav from this place towards the right side the height of this horizontal nav shrank so that means our horizontal nav does not have a fixed height it depends on its contents if there are more content it's going to occupy more space if there are less content it's going to occupy less space but we want our horizontal navigation bar to have a fixed height so we have to make sure that no matter what the content our horizontal navigation bar always have a fixed height so that means we have to manually give it some height so let's go up again to our horizontal navigation and let's give it a height and the height that i'm going to give is 17% of viewing height okay now our height has been increased even though we have the same contents that we previously had so that means this height is fixed now the other thing that we have to make sure is that if there are lots of contents over here in the rest of the page and we have a scroll bar and we scroll down we want to be able to see this horizontal navigation bar no matter how much contents we have over here so that means when we scroll down this horizontal nav must be visible at all time it it shouldn't scroll up and get invisible so to make it visible at all times we have to set its display property to fixed so display is fixed sorry not display position fixed and once we give it position fixed we have to set its left right top and bottom columns as well as you can see since we haven't set those properties so again it's occupying as much space as it is required to fit in the contents and setting the position other than the static will take the element out of the normal flow of the html page as well so this element the horizontal navigation is now not part of the normal flow of the html page so that that means the html page thinks that this vertical navigation is its first element and that's why it has put that first element at the very top of the browser so now we have to do two things again we have to make sure that this horizontal navigation covers the whole horizontal part of the browser and the rest of the content sit after this horizontal navigation bar so first of all let's fix its width so make sure that it stretches out and covers the whole browser width we have to set the top to 0 that means we want it to start at the 
very top of the browser with where it currently is but we want to make it explicit so top zero left zero it will this won't have any effect because it's already there now we have to make sure that it, st it stretches out towards the right side of the browser window as well so right zero as well now this has been stretched out but the rest of the elements are now behind it because this is not the normal flow and the first element in the normal flow has also taken a position with respect to the top left corner of the browser for the html document now the first element is the right navigation so right navigation is sitting somewhere here and below that we have contents page we have to bring those sections down now since this horizontal navigation is occupying 17 percent of the viewing height so we have to make sure that other contents come after the 17 percent of viewing height so let's go to our vertical nav block and let's set its display property to fixed as well because we want the vertical navigation bar to be fixed as well now for the top we have to start it 17 percent of the viewing height because this is where our horizontal navigation ends as far as the left is concerned we want it to start from the very left end of the browser and for the right we don't want it to stretch out and cover the whole browser width so let's not define the right only define the width so let's make it 20 percent of viewing width and for the height let's give it 100 minus 17 83 83 percent of viewing height just to get a clear visualization let's give it a border temporary solid one pixel let's give it color black no change spelling mistake v e r t i c a vertical left okay now you can see this vertical navigation but you still can't see the contents in it because the top property that we set doesn't seem to have taken effect that's because again it's not display it's position okay good we are able to see the contents of the vertical navigation bar as well but now the content section is hidden behind these two elements because now both of these elements are out of the normal flow of the html elements and the first element in the normal flow is that content section so it's sitting somewhere over here in the top left corner of the browser because for the html in its normal flow that's the first child so we have to make sure it comes and sits over here it occupies the rest of the window so we have to bring it down 17 viewing height down and for the left we have to give it 20 viewing height so content again set its position to fixed not fixed let's make it absolute for the top let's give it 17 viewing height so this will bring it 17 percent down and for the left let's start where our vertical navigation ends so our vertical navigation covers 20 percent of the viewing width so let's give it let's start off from the 20 percent of the viewing window and let's give it some background color to see how much space it's occupying let's give it red temporarily cover color okay now you can see the content section is here now before we define further styling let's apply some refactoring so the thing is this this height has been given 17 percent of viewing height and the rest of these two elements have been placed with respect to that 17 percent of viewing height now suppose if i go and change the viewing height of vertical navigation from 17 to let's say 7 so this is this is what happens so now this much space is occupied by navigation horizontal navigation but our vertical navigation and the content section both remain in their own actual positions where we put them that is 17 percent down and 20 percent towards the left if we want these elements to adjust accordingly if we change the height over here for that we have to do refactoring and rather than applying the actual values we are going to create variables then at all the places we will be using those variables and once we change the value of variable it's going to take effect everywhere that variable has been used so let's go up and create two variables let's make it vertical height 17 percent of viewing height and let's make it horizontal name to align with the names given to it given to the respective html sections horizontal height and 
but we can leave width 20% of green width and let's make it nav over here as well horizontal nav height vertical nav width okay now let's go down and replace height with variable horizontal nav height Again, let's change it to horizontal navigation height and for the width, vertical navigation width. And to this height, let's also make it 100% of viewing height minus put it under brackets, otherwise, it won't take up the horizontal navigation height. So now, if horizontal navigation is changed, it, that value is going to be subtracted from. 100% of viewing height and will be assigned to vertical navigation. Now for the content, again, the top is going to be horizontal navigation height and the left is going to be vertical navigation width. Did I do any changes? Oh, okay. Actually, what we need to do is that we have to, since we are calculating an expression, so we have to pass it as an expression to calc function. So we have to make sure there is space Okay, now it's working. Now, if we change the horizontal navigation, it's going to take effect everywhere. So let's go back and from 17 being high to let's change back to 7 and see. See, everything has been readjusted according to that height. So that's the benefit of using variables. Let's make it 17 again. Next, we have to make sure that this content section occupies 100% of the rest of the window. So for that, since we have already defined variables so rather than using variables let's use right zero now it has been stretched towards the end and for the height let's give the minimum height again calculate it to be 100% viewing height minus horizontal height so whatever is left so now this whole part is content section. Now let's remove this temporary color. So this is minimum height. That means if there are more contents, that portion can scroll down. Now when there are lots of contents in this portion and we get a scroll bar to scroll down and as we will scroll down, the horizontal navigation will be shadowed by the contents in the content section. And if you don't want that to happen, we have to make sure it always stays on the top no matter what. For that, we are going to give it red index. As long as this particular element has the highest index value, Z index value, it will remain above the rest of the elements. So this will ensure that even when there are more contents in the content section and we have got a scroll bar and as we scroll down, this horizontal window will still be visible. It won't be shadowed behind the content section. Okay. Now let's go back again to our vertical section and, and remove this border and give it this background color and then work on styling these links as well. So let's go to vertical navigation. Let's remove this border. Background color, primary color. Okay. Now the approach that we are going to take to bring all of these links on separate lines, we are going to set the display property for this vertical navigation to flex and the flex direction is going to be columns. This will bring all of these links into separate lines. So display is flex. Flex direction is going to be column there it is now let's justify contents flex start I have selected flex end I need to select flex start it will bring them to the top okay we don't need to define align items because they are by default aligned to the left and this is what we want now the rest of the styling we have to apply on the links themselves since we might need links at other places as well. So let's define the basic styling for the link in a mixin and then call that mixin in the vertical navigation. So let's go to base styles and let's define another mixin. Let's give name links. Let's remove the underline by setting text token decoration to none. Text transform capitalize. As is the color is concerned, let's give it white color. Let's give it some padding. The top 
heading let's give it one frame all around or let's give it 0.5 frame left and right okay we have to call this mix in which we haven't so we have to include it in the vertical nails since they are all anchor elements so we have to define anchor head within the vertical navigation and there we have to include this mix in which was named links okay we need to increase the font size as well and apply some cover property as well so let's go back to mix in and now we have to define the font size let's make it larger now we have to define hover effect so when we hover over any element it's supposed to be m percent so we want the color to change to button color and we want font size okay let's change the font size to the normal font size is 1.2 rem and then when we hover over it the font size the font size increases from 1.2 rem to 1.4 rem okay okay now when we are hovering over them the color is changing and the size font size is increasing as well however because the size is increasing it's pushing the other element further down as well which we don't want so how can we tackle this issue there there are many ways we can set its display property to block and give it certain fixed height but when we define links at other places we might not need them to be block elements so since we are increasing the font size from 1.2 to 1.4 rem how about we remove that percent of padding from this element so when the font size increases the padding decreases let's give it a try padding top bottom from 1 rem to 0.8 rem and the left and right may remain 0.5 rem okay yeah that's better now we are done with almost all the styling the only thing that remains is that this admin which represents the current page on which we are currently navigating this should be displayed over here this area so that means we have to move it 20% towards the left and this is 17% of being height so maybe we may place it over here let's say at 12% of our 14% of being height now this admin is inside the left navigation sorry now this admin is inside the horizontal navigations left child so rather than going through this hierarchy let's give wherever this admin in that element a class name and then we refer to it directly so let's go to layout and this is admin let's give this paragraph a class name admin as well now in layout since it's it's been the horizontal navigation so let's put it over here right outside this that block and let's give it display property sorry not display position position absolute for the top let's give it 14% of viewing height and for the left let's give it little bit more 20% of viewing height. Okay, that better. Let's push it a bit further up. Let's make it 12%. Yeah, that's better. Again, text transform. Capitalize. Maybe change the color from pure black to button color. Okay. We are almost done with our styling. The only part that remains is this one. Now, since these are the default contents. of the yield section so when there is no section which is replacing the contents of the that yield section we see these contents so that means this is just text it's not any html element so i'm not going to target it because that might affect the styling which is going to be defined in other html pages which are which will extend this admin page so i'm going to keep it like this later on we might replace this string with a view using a facade and then we will apply some basic changes so that this welcome to admin dashboard comes in the center over here 
Now, before we end this tutorial, let's go to our category page and see if these changes have been applied there as well. Okay, so as you can see, the changes have been applied over here as well. Okay, now that means as far as the styling is concerned, 90% of the styling for the dashboard is already done. The only part that remains is that when we define the other pages such as category and product pages, we have to define styles for this content section and that will come when we get to those pages. So that brings us towards the end of today's video in which we learned how to integrate the build tool with the Laravel application, the basic configuration that we needed to do. We installed a preprocessor for Sauce and integrated it with Feed. And we have defined most of the styling for our dashboard. In the next video, we will again learn Laravel concepts. I hope you liked this tutorial and if you did, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and share. Thank you so much.